So I, I guess I'll get going with the opening song. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the church in Ocean Park. And great to see you this morning. Everybody, take, take a stretch. Oh, gosh. Whew. And maybe look over your left shoulder. And look over your right shoulder and move those shoulders. Uh, definitely have zoom, zoom neck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right. So put yourselves on mute, please, because I know we still can't sing together. I can't, I cannot wait until we are able to do that. But we're starting off now with Women's History Month. So gonna start off, and you have just one line to sing. And your line of this opening song goes like this. Ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? I've got a setting of the uh, Sojourner Truth song. Well, Sojourner Truth speech. And I believe, I'm trying to make sure that I've got this right, but I believe that actually a, a songwriting friend of mine who's, who's really wonderful, uh, Priscilla Herdman uh, was one of the people that put this to music. And so it's not the entire speech, but it's a good portion of it. So welcome to the church in Ocean Park. And don't forget your line is, ain't I a woman? Okay, so let me hear you sing that. One, two, three, sing that. Ain't I a woman? All right, so here we go. Well, that man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages, lifted over ditches, and given the best place everywhere. Well, nobody ever gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Here we go. Ain't I a woman? Uh-huh. You know what I love about this group? Sometimes when I do this, I see men that don't want to sing that. But in this group, everybody sing. I love it. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And ain't I a woman? Your turn. Ain't I a woman? Look at me, look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns. No man could head me. And ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? Well, I could work as much and eat as much as any man. When I could get it, I had to bear Ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? Now I have borne five children and seen most all of them sold off into slavery. And when I cried out with a mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. I said, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Here we go. Ain't I a woman? That man over there says that women can't have the same rights as a man. Cause Christ wasn't a woman. He said, Christ wasn't a woman. Well, where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. And man didn't have nothing to do with it. Sojourner Truth. Now, you know, that's not how her speech actually ended. It ended like this. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. 
and now they's asking to do it and the men better let them. <laughs> that was 1851, a woman's rights convention in Akron, Ohio, where she made that speech. So thanks everybody for singing. Welcome to the church in Ocean Park. Yes, and thank you so much, Kim, for opening up, opening us up with that great song. Welcome, everybody. My name is Louise Dobbs. I'm the Minister of Music here, and I welcome you to the Church in Ocean Park. We're a caring interfaith congregation, and we celebrate diversity, treating ourselves and others with respect. Uh, we are interfaiths who are you, you are welcome if you're Jewish, if you're Muslim, if you're Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, Wiccan, Sikh, atheist, or some combination or something else altogether. Uh, we extend, extend a special invitation to those who are single, married, divorced, gay, transgender, filthy, rich, or dirt poor. We welcome you if you are recover, in recovery or still addicted. If you stayed up really late last night and you're tired today, we offer a special invitation to those who work too hard, don't work, have lost their jobs because of the pandemic or our frontline workers. And we even welcome you if you cannot spell or if you're very intellectual or just love to watch TV. We invite those who are inked, pierced or both. So we invite tourists, seekers, and doubters, bleeding hearts, and you. And we welcome you if you think that church is not a place you want to be, but this is a very special church. So I welcome you to the Church in Ocean Park. And one of the ritual things we do every Sunday to gather ourselves here from everything we've been doing, everything we've been feeling, everything we've been thinking, from waking up. We do a chant by Thich Nhat Hanh. We, uh, let's see, I am here. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have arrived. I, without the music, I don't remember it. I have arrived. I am home in the here and in the now. And we'll sing it three times. I'm going to gather myself here. I hope you do the same thing. I have arrived. I am home in the here and in the now. I have arrived. I am home in the here and in the now. I have arrived. I am home. In the here, in the now. Thank you. And now I invite Reverend Joseph Hepburn to talk about Lent a little bit. Okay. Thank you, Louise. Uh, each Sunday during Lent, we have a little Lenten moment. And today I'm doing it from the Psalms. And today we are looking at Psalm 49. Psalm 49. This Psalm is written by the four sons of Korah. And it speaks of the difference between self rescue and self care. The difference between self rescue and self care. Korah's father could not uh, receive and revive himself by wealth. He was destroyed by attempting to use his own wealth to rebel against Moses. And so he lost that battle. Lent, therefore, is a time of remembering, remembering what is important. Life's destructive properties lead the good and the bad to the same final resting place. Jesus refused to rescue himself in the wilderness by doing miraculous things like turning stones into bread 
and so on. But his care enabled him to stay focused on God's word and the words of wisdom from the old age flags. Sense here is that it advises us to find time and to fine tune our ears to the sayings of the wise, as the Korah brothers say in verse 3. Fine tune your ears to the sayings of our wise patriarchs and people of old. And if that does not help, he says in the following verse. Listen to the sound of your harp. Listen to the sound of the music in your soul. This is our Lenten meditation for today. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Joseph. And now I invite, and I will just say this, we saw Janet this morning before church. She's doing a lot better. She's healing, she's resting, and she's taking care of, good care of herself. And she'll be back with us very soon. And now I want to invite Larry Dilge to do a song with us. And I just want to mention Larry Dilge is a good friend of ours. He's part of our community and he has led uh, Pete Seeger songs uh, Tuesdays at two twice. And I want to say Mimi Kennedy is here too. Larry Dilge and Mimi Kennedy are going to be our Communitas honorees this year, uh, as well as Jean Gaskas, who's here on this call, and we're so excited. And I just want to say that Larry and Mimi uh, are good friends with Rodney Crow, who is a master poet, Grammy-winning, uh, hit-making singer, songwriter, poet, and um, he is going to sing at our Communitas. So, so exciting. Thank you, Larry and Mimi, for that. And so I give you Larry Dilge. Welcome, Larry. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach Reach out your hand Oh, someone will come running And I know they'll take you home even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in. You can reach up and rise again. Lift your head and look around. You will be You will be found. There's a place where you don't have to feel unknown. And every time that you call out, you're a little less alone. If you only say the word from across the silence, your voice is heard. And oh, someone will come running, and I know they'll bring you home. 
Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to follow you, carry you When you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in Cause you'll reach up and rise again Lift your head and look around You will be found You will be found Out of the shadows The morning is breaking And all is new All is new It's filling up the emptiness Suddenly I see that all is new all is new you are not alone 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 you are not you are not When the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to far carry you When you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in You can reach up and rise again Lift your head and look around You will be found You will be found. Just reach out. Wow, gorgeous. Thanks, Larry. All right, Joseph. Okay, it is my great pleasure this morning to welcome our speaker and I would say, and preacher for today. Her name is Athena Danilo. Athena Danilo is an associate marriage and family therapist who is passionate about providing culturally sensitive therapy for millennials struggling with perfectionism, codependent relationships, distress, and depression. Athena helps millennials break past their fears of imperfection so that they can begin to build greater courage to show up their authentic self, to strengthen their inner voice, and to find their true purpose in life. So she wholeheartedly believes in the powers of human connection and that we can experience healing when we share our story and when and we share our story within the safe presence of another. And so she is here today to discuss the importance of mental health awareness, the increase in struggles during these difficult and evolving times and how we can get the support and the help that we need. So, Let's give a hearty Church in Ocean Park welcome to Athena Danilo. Thank you, Reverend Joseph, and thank you everyone for having me here today. It's such a blessing to be able to share this space with you all, and I really appreciate the warmth and the openness that you all provide in this community and congregation. And Thank you for the introduction. So that's a little bit about me and what I'm gonna speak about today. Um, and I did wanna share a little bit more about the work that I do as a therapist. Um, a practice called Scene Counseling Center. And my passion for my work definitely stems from the belief that I have in how connection can heal. This is connection that we have to one another. So the human connection, it could be the connection we have to a higher power, as well as the connection we have to everything around us, like nature and earth. 
So specifically in regards to the human connection, I believe that we experience healing when we can share our story in the safe presence of another. And that's the space that I seek to provide my clients. And I know this to not only true, be true because of my own journey with my clients, but also my own personal struggles and hardships and how being able to seek mental health support has definitely healed and transformed me in different ways. Um, so in terms of my passion for the work that I do, um, it comes from the fact that I feel like it's a gift to be able to give others what I've experienced and to be able to support them along their journeys. So that's a little bit about myself and to also speak a little bit about um, what led me here today. I, I do want to thank Donna so much for inviting me to speak and to share a little bit about how we met. Um, we met through a mutual friend of ours and it's been such a pleasure to be able to connect with her on a personal level, but also to learn more about the work that she does through the Encouragement uh, Project and how that came to be. Um, it's definitely a heartbreaking experience in terms of the loss that she's had with losing her son Cliff and within that pain to see the courage that she has had to be able to start the encouragement project and to be able to be a voice for many others that have experienced such senseless losses. Um, seeking justice for these losses. So I just wanted to give a few words about that. And thank you again, Donna, for having me. So now I could shift to talking a little bit about mental health in regards to Mental Health Awareness Month. So I'm going to be speaking a little bit about how there's an increase in mental health struggles during these times. So these are definitely difficult and evolving times. You know, we're having the fight for equality and justice continuing along with the pandemic still being with us. And all of this happening in the midst of our own personal struggles as well that we experience day to day. So it's definitely understandable for there to be a wide range of emotions that we're all experiencing and to have those emotions feel heavier than they usually do. And there's many studies that are showing that during these times, there's been an increase in mental health struggles such as substance use, PTSD, depression, suicidal ideations for many that struggle with depression. So with the increase in mental health struggles during this time, there also has been an increase in um, needing mental health support. So with that, it's also important to kind of recognize some of the barriers that are um, in place in regards to seeking mental health treatment. So there's many different barriers to seeking mental health support. Some of those are financial as well as some other logistical barriers. But today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the stigma around mental health and what it means to ask for health. Um, so over the past decade or so, we've definitely seen the perception of mental health evolve and um, some of that has been positive. So for example, in the media, we're, we're definitely seeing mental health being depicted more in some inaccurate ways. So for example, we're seeing celebrities be more open about their struggles with mental health. Depicted in more TV shows and movies all of that which is very helpful in terms of normalizing, you know, that it's okay to struggle and it's okay to need help. Um, we're also seeing shifts occur on a micro and macro level in our community. So for example, health systems are evolving in terms of providing more coverage for mental health struggles. We're seeing schools incorporate more counseling services for students that need social and emotional support. So all of these shifts are wonderful. Um, and there are still stigmas that are present in our society around mental health. And a lot of these stigmas can be influenced and are influenced by societal, cultural, as well as individual factors. So to speak a little bit about that, um, sometimes these stigmas can include messages that, you know, one should just be able to get over what they're struggling with or that you know, it's their fault for struggling and having um, these emotions and their mental health conditions. 
um, they some individuals are told by others that you know that mental health support is unnecessary and that they can control what they're experiencing and they don't need support. And sometimes individuals get made to feel as though they're crazy or weak for struggling the way that they are. So all of these messages can cause people that are struggling with mental health conditions to feel ashamed of what they're going through. It could cause them to quiet their struggles, which then leads them to not reach out for support and causes them to be alone in what they're experiencing, which isn't helpful. So the less that we speak about the presence of mental health struggles in our country, the less human and the more alone we can feel in our pain and our hardships. The fact is mental health is real, just as physical health is important, so is mental health. And it's okay to not feel okay all the time. After all, we're human. So the more we can speak about the hardships and the not so pleasant parts of life, the more we could destigmatize mental health and the more we can make it okay for people that are struggling to reach out for support and to get the support that they need. So I'm gonna end by saying that these are really difficult times and it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to need some extra support. Um, to get that relief and that healing from the overwhelm. Um, and I also want to say that I myself, as well as my colleagues at SYNC, you know, we are accepting clients and offering more accessible and affordable care, because that could also be one barrier to seeking support. So um, I definitely want to put myself out there as a resource for anyone who's struggling and needs a listening ear. Um, so thank you all. <laughs> Welcome. Any questions or feedback? I appreciate yeah, being able to have this space to talk about mental health and to, on my part, to take one step towards um, destigmatizing struggles and, you know, making it okay to reach out for support. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Athena. There will be a time for community sharing Great. right after Larry Dilge sings another song. I woke up this morning to a garbage truck Looks like this old horseshoe's done run out of luck If I came home, would you let me in? Fry me some pork chop and forgive my sin Surround me with your boundless love. Confound me with your boundless love. I was drowning in a sea, lost as I could be when you found me with your boundless love. Sometimes my old heart is like a washing machine. It bounces around till my soul comes clean. And when I'm clean and hung out to dry, I'm going to make you laugh until you cry. Surround me with your boundless love. Confound me with your boundless love. I was drowning in a sea, lost as your boundless love. If by chance I should find myself at risk of falling from this jagged cliff, 
Confound me with your boundless love. I was lost as I could be when you found me with your boundless love. You dumbfound me with your boundless love. You surround me with your boundless love. Thank you so much, Larry. And now it is time for community sharing, a time when any of you would like to make a comment or ask a question of the speaker. Um, so the best way to do this is to go to the participants menu and click raise hand. And I will call on you, Greg, Kevin, or Claudia, or Daria. Hey, um, so I really appreciated when, Athena, you talked about how we should essentially have more empathy for people who are experiencing mental struggles, even if we're not. And I really like that because you know what? Shame does nobody any good. Um, so I like that. Yes, thank you for your kind words. And I agree, um, the more we turn inward with our struggles, it creates the shame and that could just be a heavy burden to carry. So, you know, I really wanna normalize that it's okay to struggle and reach out for help. So thank you, yeah. Audrey Lyness. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, Athena, thank you for your message. I'm wondering, in your opinion, how important is it in terms of developing trust and relationship um, for uh, people to be able to go to therapists um, with whom they share an identity? For example, Asian uh, clients uh, working with Asian therapists, trans clients working with trans therapists, et cetera. Yeah, Audrey, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, and that, that varies depending on a person's unique needs. Um, but I think, yeah, considering different cultural factors that shape one's identities, as well as, you know, one's needs and values and beliefs are always important to consider. So some individuals might find that having someone that shares a similar racial or ethnic background, it creates a more safer space for them to be able to show up. Whereas others might find that, you know, not as helpful. Uh, and that could be pretty common, for example, amongst Asian Americans where, you know, there sometimes is this belief that it's not okay to reach out for help. So it could create this sense of shame. So sometimes they feel more comfortable working with someone, a therapist that isn't of the same ethnic background. So it does vary, but it's important to kind of consider what the um, unique, the unique needs of the person. Um, and in terms of my work, I strive to take a culturally sensitive approach, meaning that, you know, I don't know, you know, everything about different cultures and um, different experiences, but I am open to exploring the different factors that shape one's identity as well as one's um, values and beliefs and how they view their struggles and what they need. Um, so, and I believe that all of us know our stories the best. Um, we just need a, a tuned listener to be able to sit with, with us in that and to figure things out with us. Okay, thank you. I see Maureen Dean. Yes, hello. Hi, Athena. Um, really appreciate what you, you're sharing. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, yes, I'm okay. Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your sharing. Thank you so much and the interconnected. I was particularly curious about, um, you know, in the intro as mentioned about the millennial and your targeted uh, millennial client, but uh, how do you think um, in the, 
among the professions that what is needed for a sort of intergenerational um, connection between therapists and the clients. Mm -hmm. Like um, so many of the millennials now, and I think of millennials, I think in Britney Spears, Rihanna, mm -hmm. who are, mm -hmm. these are people who are becoming parents themselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. think about millennials, it was just the other day. And how, um, you know, through like the Black Lives Matter movement, there's been so mm -hmm. much intergenerational connection mm -hmm. across the board. So like in your practice, how do you, um, you might be a generation, so yeah, no, um, but uh, how do you, how would you think would be good for that um, intergenerational correspondence? I think it's a part of cultural sensitivity too, like how mm -hmm. to deal with the, this idea of the generations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Maureen, great question. Thank you. And it's important to notice, yeah, that each generation may have its own unique struggles. Um, mm. There could be differences, but there's also similarities in terms of mm -hmm. how all of us choose to connect with one another. And um, I always mm. say it's important to just lead with a curious mindset. So that could mm. be in terms of amongst individuals of di different generations of just being curious about one another, being curious to know, well, what, you know, why does that person have that belief or, you know, why are they striving for that? Um, and with that curiosity, it could help um, lessen that disconnection that could oftentimes be in place, um, just as you were mentioning. So um, that's important to be aware of, but it's always that idea of curiosity and empathy of just seeking mm -hmm. to understand. We don't have mm -hmm. to agree on everything mm -hmm. um, in the world, but to just be open to understanding one another. So mm -hmm. That plays okay. a role as well in that. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Craig Walter. Yeah, this, this comes in, I guess you could say, response to seeing someone that's disturbed and someone you really care about, is there a way to more or less be of service to them at the same time, keep your sanity and not fall into what it is they're doing um, as part of illness, recognizing that they are disturbed, but at the same time wanting to be of some sort of help to them. I'm wondering if, if if, if, if there is a way to do that while not being, I guess you could say traumatized and wreak havoc upon yourself. Yeah, Craig, it's, it's really important to, to be aware of, um, especially myself as a therapist, um, working with clients that are coming in with all sorts of struggles. It's important to be aware of like, how can we be of support while also maintaining our own um, inner well-being. So in terms of having someone that we know is struggling and would benefit from the support, I think it's just about being able to be there for them, providing them with resources and, and helping them make that connection. Because oftentimes when someone is struggling, the idea of reaching out for help feels so overwhelming. So it could just be helpful to be that person that helps get them connected to resources out there, whether that's counseling or other, other resources within the community. Um, and being able to do that while, as you said, you know, how do you manage your own inner well-being? Um, and there's a lot that I could go into in regards to that, but it's also making sure that you're making room for self-care for yourself, um, making sure that if you're starting to feel depleted or overwhelmed by the other person's struggles, that you're, you're able to tune into that and, and notice when that's happening and when you might need a bit more distance, like in a gentle way from the other and be able to make room to attend to your needs. So it's like this delicate balance <laughs> that's really hard to kind of explore, um, but it's yeah, really balancing your, your needs as well in the midst of what somebody else is struggling with. Hey, Mimi Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you for this. I, I sort of have a threefold, but um, 
I wonder where you're located. So how people access you and whether you're building trust if somebody sees you for the first time over Zoom on COVID. Mm -hmm. And my second is how is it best to suggest to somebody that there is help and they might might want to access it you know mm -hmm. that a successful intervention on anybody's part mm -hmm. and have you had much success with um people who are evangelical so they soar i mean you know this is an interfaith congregation but we embrace all kinds and i was just wondering i've found that sometimes this stricter the dogma the less ability to have a mental health solution so thanks i know that's a lot but thanks yeah no i appreciate it i was just taking note of <laughs> the question so in regards to the first one um i currently provide a telehealth their phone or video which is all secure and confidential um i'm looking into possibly going back to in-person sessions um depending on the situation as vaccinations are rolling out and all that um, but my office is located in Burbank, California. So that is where I see clients in person. Um, and I think I did in the chat box, put all my info. So I have my phone number, email. If you go to my website, there's also more information about um, how to set up care with me and some other resources. Um, and then in regards to the second question, um, how to suggest uh, to someone, you know, that help would be, you know, supportive for them. It's just making sure that you have a list of, of resources um, beforehand and be able to you know, set a time to speak to them, let them know that you care for them and that you see that they're struggling and that it's okay to, to be struggling with somebody. Um, so just again, kind of normalizing the idea of reaching out for help um, and to you know, come from a place of care as you provide these resources to them. Yeah, and it may be helpful. I, I've had sometimes clients, family members reach out to me to set up services for them, you know, and that's upon agreement, but it could be helpful to, again, be that lending hand if it feels too much for the individual to reach out on their own. And then regards to the third question for individuals that have an evangelical faith background, um, I don't have too much to, I'm, I'm still kind of wrapping my thoughts around that. So I don't have uh, much to share around that at the moment, but maybe we could throw it out to the rest of the group if anyone has some thoughts, but yeah, I might come back to that if I have more to share. But thank you, Mimi. Dean Gaska. Hi, I wanted to ask you, um, if you have a, a, a friend or an acquaintance constantly asks for help and advice and then turns down all your suggestions, but constantly comes back to you for advice. Mm -hmm. how, how to manage that? Because I, I find myself getting kind of, you know, entwined with this person trying to find the solution for them. Yeah. And yet it, it seems apparent that, that nothing that I say is going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think many of us have been there. <laughs> I know myself included. Um, and it's interesting to think, yeah, well, this person is still coming back and you know asking for, for suggestions or advice or support. Um, and it's oftentimes that when people do reach out for suggestions or more specific directives about what they should do is that they, they know what they need to do. They're just not ready to, to take that next step. So I guess what may be happening is that, you know, this person is wanting change and they know what they need to do to change. They're just not ready to implement that into action. So I know that might leave you with a mixture of feelings around, well, I'm trying to offer all this, you know, this help, but it's not clicking. But, but I guarantee you that, you know, you just being there for this person in itself can be healing and is healing, whether you see it leading to change or not, but just being present. Thank you. Yeah. Early Jim. Thank you, Athena. Um, I appreciate your 
keeping coming back to the idea that it's it's okay not to be okay and uh yeah i think i think all of what you're talking about is is really uh important and central to a lot of what's happening now in our moving from harm to care uh in so many areas of uh trying to uh achieve equity uh, i think uh, black lives matter is really holding that out um uh, very well and uh i've just recently well uh, there's a new podcast just started last week by um, Diane Guerrero, um, who's probably best known, uh, I guess, for being an actress on Orange is the New Black. And I got to know her story uh, about uh, being 14, coming home from middle school, and, and uh, her parents had just been deported, parents and brother. Uh, and so she's started this, she's written a book, but she's just as of last Monday, uh, you know, she's got a podcast called, yeah, no, I'm not okay. And, um, it's very powerful. Uh, she takes in the, she's only got one episode out so far, but, uh, it's a, a long deep dive into her relationship with her brother who was deported back to Colombia. Uh, with her parents, and it's been 20 years, and they're discussing, you know, the the trauma that that caused for both of them, the dealing with substance abuse, and uh, it's it's really uh, quite quite moving, and and it's a real window into you know what happens to uh, each family that gets separated like that. Um, I'm going to um, just uh, end with something a little lighter, uh, in a way, um, because it also, uh, it, well, it's uh, something that some of us celebrate every year. Uh, it's pegged to a birthday of a young woman who committed suicide. Uh, so that part is not light, but uh, it's it's um, celebrating her. Um, it's called International Wear a Tutu Day. And everybody wears some version of a tutu, <laughs> whatever they've got, whatever they want to do. But uh, it's, it's okay to be different. It's okay to wear your difference on the outside. And people who know me know that I do that a lot. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate those words and everything that you shared. All right, there was another question in the chat. At what point does one advise a friend to seek professional help rather than just provide a listening ear? Yeah, um, that's based on like a personal preference. Um, and it depends on, yeah, if you feel like you're at a point where you know, as that person's friend, you're quite exhausted and you don't know what else to do or say or give. That's usually a good indication that, um, you know, suggesting support in another way for this friend would be helpful. Um, and also, you know, in terms of your experience on the outside as this person's friend, if, if you're noticing that they're they're struggling and nothing is quite shifting and you're concerned for their well-being, um, then it, it doesn't hurt again to provide some resources. Dr. Kim Harris, do you have a song for us now? I do, I do. And thanks, thank you so much, uh, Athena. And thanks, Louise, also. Uh, well, today, as, as uh, many people know, is the, I guess it's the 56th anniversary of the Bloody Sunday March in Selma, Alabama, across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And of course, this year, we're missing so many of the, the great trees of the, of the movement, of the civil rights movement. Of course, we're missing John Lewis, and we're missing Reverend C.T. Vivian, and we're missing Joseph Lowry, and we're missing Bruce Boynton. So, you know, many, many of those great trees have, have fallen. But we're still here and we still remember and we have our March song. I'm gonna do one that was uh, the young people in Selma, Alabama. This was one of their favorite songs and it is one that I think everybody knows around here. I'm gonna do 
what the spirit says do. Mm -hmm. All right, we get out this. <laughs> so sing with me, please, and move a little bit. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. And what the spirit says do, I'm going to do, Lord, Lord. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. And what the spirit says do, I'm going to do, Lord, Lord. I'm going to do what the spirit says do. I'm going to sing when the spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the spirit says sing. And when the spirit says sing, I'm going to sing, Lord, Lord. Going to sing when the spirit says sing. All right, let me see your hands. Let's, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to sing when the spirit says sing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to sing when the spirit says sing. When the spirit says sing, I'm going to sing, Lord, Lord. Gonna sing when the spirit says sing. Here we go. I'm gonna march when the spirit says march. Oh yeah. Gonna march when the spirit says march. And when the spirit says march, I'm gonna march, Lord, Lord. Gonna march when the spirit says march. I'm gonna do what the spirit says do. I'm gonna do what the spirit says. I'm going to do, Lord, Lord, going to do what the Spirit says do. And what the Spirit says do, I'm going to do, Lord, Lord, I'm going to do what the Spirit says do. And what the Spirit says do, I'm going to do, Lord, Lord, I'm going to do what the Spirit says do. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Kim. You want to start? Sure. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Kim. Happy birthday, Teresa Von Payne. Happy birthday, Amanda Gorman. Happy birthday, Monolay Committee. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to close out today with a song from... Uh, Pat Humphreys, and uh, she wrote this before she was part of Emma's Revolution. I actually believe that she wrote this for the International uh, Women's Day uh, many years ago. And she says, people always say to her, no, you didn't write this, but she did indeed write this song. <laughs> so what we want you to do, stay on mute if you would, and let's reach our arms out. And we, of course, continue to lift up Reverend Janet. Absolutely. So send your arms out to all of those that need love and lifting and healing and celebrating and gathering their courage. And we'll sing. We're going to keep on walking. Keep on walking forward. Keep on walking forward. Never turning back, never turning back. We're gonna reach out to each other, reach out to each other, reach out to each other, never turning back, never turning back. We're going to reach across our borders, reach across our borders, reach across our borders, 
Never turning back, never turning back. Service today, we will be having communion. So let's close out with going to keep on moving forward. We're going to keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Never turning back. Never turning back. Oh, we're never turning back. Never turning back. No, we're never turning back. Never turning back. Okay, everybody, unmute. Unmute, and we're going to say carry on. Ready? One, Car two, three. Carry, carry on. on. Carry 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 on. Thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, thank you. All right. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm going to sit at the welcome table i'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days one of these days all of the people gonna sit together oh all of the people gonna sit together one of these days oh all of the people gonna sit together all of the one of these days one of these days you know there's food for all at the welcome table yes there's food for all at the welcome table one of these days oh food for all at the welcome table a food for all at the welcome table one of these days i'm gonna sit I'm going to sit at the welcome table. Oh, I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Oh, I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days one of these days i'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days one of these days i'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days one of these days so Joanne is going to our sisters. We're going to go through the order of service. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Oh God, we confess to you that we have not been the people we could be. We have had many opportunities to love people and we chose a different way. We confess that we haven't taken care of ourselves as we should. And so we don't have the energy for good that we would have sometimes. But we give thanks for the times we have loved, for the times we have accepted love from others, for the times we have taken risks to fight oppression and to fight evil in the world, for the power of love in human life and in history, we give thanks. 
We give thanks for the opportunities of every day, for waking up this morning, for people to love, for food for, to eat and water to drink. We give thanks for a chance to make positive differences in the world. We give thanks for another day. And so with the people of every nation and tribe and language, with the whole church throughout the ages, we bring ourselves, all that we are, and all that we are not, joyfully giving thanks. So if you have it, you say, holy, holy, holy. Or you can say it after me. Holy, holy, holy. holy, holy Lord holy. God of power and might. Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Long ago, our ancestors knew love's power and they became the teller of love's tale. Love bound them in covenant, teaching them to live in community with compassion and concern for the poorest among them. Yet centuries of domination and violence shaped a different kind of community based on selfishness and inequality. In the struggle against oppression, Jesus became the face life. In word and deed, he announced love's new reign of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Filled with the courage and passion of love's spirit, he gave his life to challenge the unjust systems of the world. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, as he shared a meal with his friends, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his followers saying, share this bread among you. This is my body, which will be broken for justice. Do this to remember me. The bread reminds us that we are one body. We are part of each other. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, share this wine among you. This is my blood, which will be shed for liberation. Do this to remember me. This wine reminds us of the blood that is shed every day, some of it for justice, some of it because justice is not served. We drink it remembering Jesus and those who like him put their lives on the line every day. Today that takes on new meaning as many people, the majority of them people of color, who are right now putting their lives on the line so that we can continue to have this bread and this juice. We remember Jesus and we remember those who participate in Jesus-like action. And so remembering all of this, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving and proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Hope has died, hope has risen, hope will come again. And so God of love, spirit and compassion, bless us and this bread and wine, may this meal be food and drink for our journey, renewing, sustaining and making us whole. When we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we may experience the presence of Christ in our midst. We may experience the presence of those who have gone before. We may experience the power of those across the world 
fighting for justice, fighting for bread, fighting for sustenance. We are not alone. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we're going to say, I'm going to substitute the prayer here. Maybe we can all say the Lord's Prayer as we know it. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So the table is ready. All are welcome. Come and share the feast. So we take a piece of the bread. And we take the wine, the cup. We eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and shed his blood for us. And we are thankful. I have decided to follow freedom. I have decided to follow freedom. I have decided I love freedom, no turning back, no turning back, justice, I have decided to follow justice. I have decided to follow justice. I have decided to follow justice. No turning back. No turning back. Now I'm going to sing, I've decided to follow Jesus, but there may be another word that you want to put in that spot. So that's what these songs are for. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No we give God thanks. We give thanks to our Creator for enabling us to share in this sacrament, reminding us of the need to reach out and to help those in pain, those in suffering, those in struggle. We give thanks for the opportunity to have shared in this symbol of care and love. Thanks be to God. The service is ended. Have a blessed week.
thank you and thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Athena. Thank you. Pleasure to be in this space. Thank you, Jean. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes. Hi, Virginia. Yeah. Yes.